Hey everybody, today we're talking about some basic notation for some of the building blocks of geometry. We're talking about segments, rays, lines, and planes, and maybe one or two other things. So uh, actually, let me start with a line. A line is something that stretches on uh, in one, well, in two directions, to the left and to the right, or up and down, but it doesn't have any width or depth. Um, so it's this long, thin thing that goes on forever. So a line we represent with two arrows at the end. And we define a line, we name it, by putting a couple of points on it. You know, it takes two points to define a line, to make a line. Any two points you jot down on a piece of paper, you can draw a line through them. So we define a line by two points, and then this little symbol with the arrows going backward and forward on, on each end. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you put the letters in, since the line goes on forever on either end. You can call this line EF or FE, it doesn't matter. A ray is sort of like half a line. It um, has an end point, or maybe a starting point is a better way to think about it, and then it goes on forever just in one direction. We also define that by two points, and it's important that the, the, the point, the end point, the, or the starting point is the, the first letter and then the arrow points off in the direction of the second one, just like it is on the figure there. And then we also have something called a line segment, which is just a little piece of a line defined by these two endpoints. So A and B are the endpoints of the segment, so we call this segment AB or segment BA, and the symbol up top is just a line without any arrows. So that's lines, rays, and segments. Here we have a representation of a plane. And um, there are three points in this plane. It actually takes three points at minimum to define a plane, because if you had two, it would just define a line. But if you had a third point that's not on the same line with those two, then you've got the surface of a plane. So when we name a plane, you can actually do it in two ways. This could be plane RTW, or sorry, S, RTS, and we'd just put the word plane before that. So plane RTS. Or sometimes you'll see a, a letter hanging out by itself without a, a point. That's just the name of the plane. So you could also call it just, in this case, plane V. So two different ways. Remember, these points need to be non-collinear. So three points, non-collinear, or just whatever letter you're deciding to name the plane. A couple other concepts you need to know here. One is midpoint, and uh, that's exactly what it sounds like. It's the point right in the middle of something. So it would note the halfway mark. And then bisect, which is related to bisect something means to cut it in half. So if you bisect something, um, you're breaking it or cutting it at the midpoint. All right, let's look at a couple of problems. This first one up here says, choose the symbol notation and name for the geometric figure. So this has got two endpoints, A and B. So this is a line segment. And actually, there's only one that says segment, so it's got to be this one. And it's got the correct symbol up top, that line without any arrows on it. So the correct answer there is A, B, segment. This one says, choose the symbol notation name for the geometric figure. And here we have a ray. Ray starts at C and goes on through D and off forever in one direction. So it's not a line or a segment. I can get these out of here. It is a ray. How do we choose between ray DC or ray CT, CD? It does matter. It's really important that this first point, the end point here, comes first, and then it, the arrow goes off in that direction. So in this case, C is the correct answer, and A is incorrect. All right, and then we've got a couple of problems about planes. Uh, and we want to pick the proper notation. You can see all these points are on the plane. Point X is hovering above the plane somewhere. And then there's this name here. They gave it a letter without a point. In each case, it's Q. So this could be called plane Q, or it could be called plane three of these points that are on the plane, as long as they're not collinear. This one's got plane Q, so that's probably the right answer. But I ought to look at this one just to see why WT. Well, here's Y, here's W, here's T. Ah, the reason that doesn't work is those points are all in the same line. If you're going to name a plane by three points, they have to be non-collinear. Let's look at this next one. Mm, we don't have plane Q. 
I don't know what they're thinking with plane PW. That's just not how we name planes at all. And this one is four letters. We don't use four letters, we use three. So it's between ZYV and WZV. And here's W, here's Z, here's V. Uh, those are all three on the same line. But Z, Y, and V are not all on the same line. So this is a legal name for that plane. All right, a couple more. This next one says, which of the following statements is false? And then we've got four things to look at. So the first one says, if A is the midpoint of PQ, then PA is, well, in this symbol means is congruent to. And what that means is that they have the same measure. So if you're going to think about this, we've got a segment, PQ, and it says A is the midpoint. So A is going to be exactly in the middle. That's right there. So is this chunk, PA, the same measure as this chunk, AQ? And that's true. It will be. If A is the midpoint, then it's equal length on either side. So that's true. B says ray AB and ray B, a, B, a are equivalent notations. That means they mean the same thing. That is not true. It, the order matters in array. It either starts at point A or it starts at point B, but not both. So this is our false one. Let's just look at these other two. C says AB means the measure of segment AB. That is true. Uh, the length of between two points, we just uh, note by writing the two points. So that means the length between A and B. And this one says AB is a line, AB is a ray, and AB is a segment. And that's correct because you've got the two arrows on the top of the first one, the one arrow on the top of the second one, and no arrows on the segment. All right, last one. Again, we're supposed to say which one is false. The first one says if A bisects PQ, just like what we have up here, then A is the midpoint of PQ. And that's true. It cuts it in half, so it is the midpoint. And then it says line AB is equivalent to line BA. That's true. With lines, it doesn't matter. So these first two are true. The second two are about angles, and we actually haven't talked about that yet. There are a couple of ways to name angles. And what's important is that the vertex of the angle, the point here where the two lines come together, that has to be in the middle. So you could call this angle angle ABC, and they put that little angle symbol in front of it. You could also call it angle CBA. Uh, means the same thing, but the B stays in the middle. So let's look at these two. The first one says angle ABC is equivalent to angle BCA. And the next one says ABC is equivalent to CBA. Well, this one's OK because B stays in the middle. This one is not. Here we have B in the middle, and here we have C in the middle. So those are two different angles. So this one's false. So that's a little bit of work with some basic notation uh, for some standard geometric figures.